when I was a teenager, I was, I was addicted to alcohol and um, got in a lot of trouble and got sober when I was 17. And, um, and then three years after that, I was on a, a television show. And that felt great. And it was like this new thing, a new source of, you know, to fill me up. Like when I was young, it was like I was just shy. I just didn't know how to get along in the world. I didn't know how to talk to people. And alcohol was like the best solution for that. The problem is for me, you know, normally you have a window. It's like it's fun. They say and then fun with problems and then just problems. Like my window from fun to just problems was so short. And I, you know, I was a ward of the court and, and all this stuff. But um, once I did, couldn't use alcohol to sort of fill that hole, it was like, oh, success, attention. This is great. And so in a weird way, it, I got addicted to validation, I guess, or success or whatever that is. And, um, and then there was another thing that happened where along the road, you know, of trying to get success and, you know, climb the top of that mountain. Um, attention from women, success with women also became a huge source of validation for me. The problem with that is, like, I'm sure you can guess, like any sort of drug or anything, like, there's never enough. You know, it's sort of always the, I was, I, I talk about like this if then sort of scenario where I thought, if I get this, then I'll be happy. And then I, then I got there and then it was like, well, okay, well, if I get that, then I'll be happy. And it was, it was never ending. And it was, it's also sadly the same thing with, with people, you know, it's, oh, if I'm with that, like, this is all subconscious, but like, if I'm with that person, I'll be happy. And then it's not enough. I'm just trying to fill that hole and it never gets filled. So at the, around the same time I hit the, the wall with work, my, um, my sister-in-law, Iris Torres, given me a, a book on sex and love addiction. And, um, and I'd been in recovery for a long time, right? But I got so I got sober really young. So like I could identify with a lot in in you know the alcohol literature but like when I read this book it was like it hit me like a bullet and it was like oh my god that's me. And up until that point like as crazy as it is like I had inklings like okay maybe this is an issue my parents had stayed married their their whole lives, so like I respected marriage, and like there had been a part of me even all through it, even at my craziest, where it was like, well, I wanna, I wanna get married, I wanna be in a serious relationship. I just I didn't know how. And after reading that book, it was like, oh, this is an issue that I'm not gonna solve on my own. It's such a powerful drug, and I. I got hooked on it for 20 more years. And the, more, the insidious part of that is that I stayed sober from alcohol all that time. So, and I went to meetings you know, all that time. I even tried to, you know, sponsor other people. And, and so in my head, it was like, oh, I'm sober. I'm living a spiritual life. Where? On the side, I'm acting out now in all these other ways, and I couldn't see it. And um, even my sponsor was like, you know, who's happily married. He was like, look, whatever happens, but, you know, because I, I'd, I'd had girlfriends. I could never be faithful to anybody. So I cheated, I cheated on everyone before Isabel. And he's like, look, the cheating is dishonest. I don't think that's good for your sobriety. But if you're not dating someone and you want to go and hook up, like whatever happens between two consenting adults is fine. Like that's what he said. The problem was I took that and I ran with it and used it as an excuse to, you know, just hook up all over the place. And it was like, well, 
we're being honest here, right? And like you said, like completely blind to power dynamics or anything like that, but also completely blind to people's feelings. I didn't want to hurt people. And I, in fact, I wasn't like really a one night stand guy. Like people that I, you know, got together with or dated, like I'd see them for a long time, years. It's just that I couldn't be present for any of them. And the behavior spun out to a point where it was like, I was hurting everybody. 